So uh, we're we're out here. We're we're back. It's uh, the spooky, scary skeletons time has occurred, and uh, today is the fifth of May, and we are back on the stream thing for this one, and we are here to talk about the the undead legions of the dynasties of old, the old uh, supremacy of the galaxy, I suppose. Le, le, as the French would say, le crâne. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely sure the French say that kind of stuff. Uh, so let me be clear. All right, so the Necrons. Necrons, Necrons. All right, 40K faction focus, Necrons. We have here, their number is Legion, their name is Death. Um, God, this cover art goes so hard too. It just, it goes so hard. I love like the, the spilling. It looks like flesh, but it's like spilling guts, uh, uh, mechanical guts from the face of the warrior. And then, you know, you have the Scorpec Lord up there. It goes so hard. Anywho, their number is Legion. Their name is Get Death, the Necrons. The Necrons had early Codex Syndrome from the prior edition. And unfortunately, they might get it again this edition because they're, I think, the second Codex to come out. Uh, but we'll see exactly how it rolls. Um, the Necrons, of course, ancient civilization, millions and millions of years before everyone amazing models, an absolute treasure. Space Marines uh, out there with like 40 mo uh, novels a year. Necrons, five books, all of them A tier. All of them incredible. Um, even the worst one for me, which is um, uh, Twice Dead King, the sequel, is still really good in its own right. Uh, Infinite Divine, a top five 40K book in general. Uh, just so good. Just so good, the Necron books. Um, so, moving on over faction rules and the like, we start off with, as we all know, the most important one, reanimation protocols. This is hilarious because I was talking to Skater, uh, my my editor, and you've also seen him on Dice Check, and I said, I wonder if they're going to do like a every command phase is regen stuff, and I, I nailed it. So, reanimation protocols... Uh, if your army faction is Necrons, at the end of your command phase, each unit from your army with this ability activates its reanimation protocols and reanimates D3 wounds. Each time such a unit reanimates a wound, if that unit contains one or more models with fewer than their starting number of wounds remaining, select one of those models. That model regains one lost wound. If all models in that unit have their starting number of wounds, but that unit is not at starting strength, one destroyed model is returned to the unit with one wound remaining. Once such a unit is at starting strength and all of its models have their starting number of wounds, nothing further happens. Now, it should be very clear and understanding something uh, very important with the new reanimation protocols that some people don't seem to understand. It is not either or. Technically, it's both. Technically, it's both. So... Let's say you reanimate D3 wounds and you have 10 brick of warriors that's down to five and you roll a three. It's not you regenerate one single model. The thing is, is that all models have their starting number of wounds. So you return it to a model with one rune remaining. That's one. Oh, they all have their starting number. That's two. Oh, they all have their starting number or they all have their starting number of wounds. That's three. So for single health models, it's basically D3 models. For non-single health models, it's wounds, but that can spill. Let's say you have canoptic wraiths and you have and you have lost one and one is down to uh, two of a three wounds. If you rolled a two, you would take one of those wounds and regenerate that uh, wraith to full, Lamau, and then you would revive another one with one wound remaining. If you roll a three, it would be regenerate to full, revive one with one wound remaining, 
regen it one more wound to two wounds remaining. They, they go with each other. They stack together, which is really fascinating. Um, now, this as a rule is a... It's, it's technically a flat-out downgrade for most part. Um, there's a couple important distinctions to be made, uh, but in a sense, it's a downgrade from a tankiness perspective. And, and let, let me try to explain the specifics. So, um, basically, uh, at the current iteration of Necrons, it's not about... It's about can you kill a 20-man warrior blob in one activation? That's the only way you can survive reanimation. With this way, because it's command phase, it's can you kill a 20-man warrior blob in your turn? Which is, is significantly less difficult. It's way easier to do. Uh, because this only happens in your command phase. That being said... For things like multi-model units, things like Scorpex, this is an enormous buff. Uh, one of the nastier things someone mentioned was Lich Guard. So let's say you have a wounded thing of Lich Guard and you got spiked and you rolled D3, you roll a three. You would put two of those to revive a Lich Guard to full, and then another Lich Guard with one. You can revive two whole Lich Guard, just one that's wounded, if you roll well enough. Like that's pretty nasty. Uh, not to mention that uh, this basically entirely replaces the Technomancer's entire job. The Technomancer was a reanimate in uh, the command phase situation. And this is entirely just their job now. It's, it's not the case anymore. Um, also, another thing to note is that it also replaces the or it's also a better living metal because this is now living metal is no longer one wound, it's D3 wounds. So your silent king is regenning D3 wounds every turn, every command phase, instead of just one, which if you don't kill him, that's pretty nasty. Um, the thing is, is that because you can kill a whole unit in one turn instead of one activation, it makes, it, it makes you ask a bigger question. Reanimation protocols as an army-wide tankiness ability is a nerf. But if the if the entire game's lethality is coming down, can you still pull it off? I don't know. Space Marines, I think, are going to be a bit of a problem because Oaths of Moment is going to be really nasty. Pick that one warrior blob and you get full rerolls to hit and wound. And that's basically guaranteeing that warrior blob dies. Um, so there's a little bit of a fear thing going on there. Um, it's a little difficult, but on the other hand, like, you know, you might lose some models in like chip damage or something. They just come right back to life. Maybe you damage a Necron Lord a little bit and he just regens to full. There's a, uh, th it depends. In my opinion, this reanimation protocol, this one right here is more thematic overall. I think this sells the Necrons uh, like army feeling better because it's like, okay, I, I did some damage to the Necrons and then I watch as my opponent just rolls dice and regens a portion of his entire army. And it's, you know, if you're a Necron player, and you've seen your opponent's face when you revive a shitload of warriors, there's kind of like, oh, oh God, oh God. It's very fun in a, you know, kind of weird way. Um, I like this reanimation more overall. I think it's just a, it's just more fun. I think it adds a bit more flavor. And I, I just, I, I like it more. I like this reanimation more. It is a nerf in terms of army-wide durability, but the lethality of the game is coming down anyway. And, it, it, but it's a buff in terms of just like late game reanimation. Plus, I think it should be noted that 
the game's lethality, like on a match per match basis, is lower as turns go on. So, you know, turn three and onwards, you could be regenning some pretty nasty units and make a, a, a pretty hefty play. So we'll see. It makes sense. The Necrons are not an army that you can just chip. You need to stomp them into the dirt uh, and, and make sure they never come back out. And so it, it's thematic. It's fully thematic. So anyway, continuing from there, uh, let's talk about the new command protocols. Uh, compared to who... <laughs> Let's look at um. Let's look at the old command protocols. Yeah, let's look at that. Let's let's look at this. <laughs> let's let's make a let's make a lovely comparison. Command protocols. Uh, where are they? Oh, here they are. So we've got this is command protocols. Q uh guy riding on board um meme image right here, and this is new command protocols. When a Necron character model is leading this unit. But each time it makes an attack, add one to the hit roll. Very simple. Now, I'm in two, I'm in two minds about this. I'm in two minds about this. Um, now, I'm not sure if those on stream right now have not heard me talk about this yet because the videos are just coming out right now. But I make a, a, a statement. I make a point that in the Space Marines, NIDS, and CSM faction focuses, there is a massive increase in... Sorry, uh, there is a massive in the tomorrow's Imperial Guard. Let's go. Uh, a massive increase in player decision making. Uh, Oaths of Moment is a decision, but doctrines are a decision. You only get them once, and once they are used once, they go away. Uh, the Nid's Shadow and the Warp is decision making as well, uh, and that that's pretty cool. And then the Chaos Dark Pact is decision making. Also, Abaddon's special ability is one of three. Decision-making. I have constantly harped on the idea that the more decisions you have to make in the game, the more skill-based it is. Because right now, in ninth, you win the game because your list is really good and you're great at movement. There is still a skill aspect, but there's not as much of a skill aspect, especially for some armies. I like decision making because the more decision making you do, the uh, the higher chance there is of you showing off how good of a general you are. Command protocols uh, it reduces decision making, which I don't like. Command protocols here, however, are so much better, more streamlined, and I think just a better concept overall. So I do like them. I'm like 30%, oh, I wish there was more decision-making so you can have a more skillful play. And then 70%, this looks really nice though, and I'm kind of okay with it. So we're 70-30. I'm mostly happy with it. Um, because Necron character leading a unit, it gets plus one to the hit roll. That's just, it's very Necrons. Necrons are soulless, undead machines that are held together by the programming power of their, their uh, lords, overlords, and pharaoh, pharaons. Um, and so this is just real, uh, really good. For those of you who don't know, like Rolling Dota, you just asked. Um, now, characters are can be attached to units as a unit. So if you have 20 block of warriors, you can take an overlord and put it in the unit and it counts as part of it. Um, if you take them out of the unit, that's fine, but it can be shot. Lookout Sir does not exist anymore. Lookout Sir only exists for very specific characters. Uh, and I think Gilliman has one. Um... So let me let me I'm I'm gonna kind of repeat myself a little bit, but let me let me go ahead and explain it just a little bit to make it kind of clearer. Um, for example, uh, the Swarm Lord has the leader rule. This means you may put him in a unit, like Seventh Edition. Um, Gilliman has something called Lone Operative, which means uh, he is not leader, so he is not put in a unit. But because he's got Lone Operative. Uh, if he's within three inches of a uh, sorry, his infantry, he gains lone operative. Lone operative means I, you cannot shoot him 
unless you are within 12. That's it. So basically he gets like mini lookout, sir. So, okay. If you are by these people, you get lone operative. You can't shoot them unless you're within 12. That's it. Uh, which also stops us from having, because dude, the amount, the amount of times I've had to be like, do measuring for, well, your character is being lookout sir from that direction, but I think this model is closest to the character. So I think I should be able to shoot it. It's all gone. Are you within 12? Great. If you're not, sucks. Done. So much better. So when a Necron character is leading a unit, the whole unit gets plus one to hit, which is basically my will be done. You know, it's my will be done. And that's great. Unit spotlights. Okay, I want to talk about the, the warriors first, and then we'll do um, monolith second. Necron warriors. Five inch move, because they're kind of slow. Toughness four, four up armor, one wound, seven leadership, two OC. Infantry battle line, Necron warriors, reanimation protocols. Uh, I want to read some stuff here specifically. They're slower, which is a normal Necron thing. Good toughness, same save, same wounds. Kind of bad leadership, but at the same time, I don't mind it because leadership isn't fear anymore. Battle shock is being pinned, being over encumbered, like like being um, swarmed. Battle shock is a is a more battlefield kind of deal, where it's not fleeing, it's being supp it's suppress it's suppressing fire basically, you know, and two OC. Um, which is pretty solid. Uh, but I must say this part here is the big one. Their number is legion. Each time this unit's reanimation protocol is active, it reanimates D6 wounds instead of D3, unless you're within an objective marker, in which case it reanimates D3 plus three wounds, which remember, wounds means models because they only have one wound. So if you don't kill a Necron warrior squad, they can reanimate D6 models. And if they're on an objective average of five, <laughs> it is, you better double tap these sons of bitches, okay? You need to double tap the bastards because they're going to come back up, which is not the worst because... They're slow. Their save isn't the greatest. Um, but um, the weapons are a little bit meh. And I think that's what makes it together. Because if you notice something, their ranged weapons actually hit on fours, not threes anymore. Now, you most likely will hit on threes, because you'll have a character linked with them, or I'm assuming you'll have a character linked with them. So you probably will be hitting on threes with that sense, but naturally they hit on fours. Um, they're, now, their special things here are lethal hits rapid fire for their flare and just lethal hits for their reaper. Now, 24 inch range, one, four, four, zero, one. So there's a couple of things they lost. They lost an AP, and uh, no, that's not the only thing they lost. They lost an AP, but they gained lethal hits, which um, if you re don't remember, lethal hits is uh, sixes to hit auto wound, much like the Voton uh, tokens, basically. Sixes to hit auto wound. Um, it's basically the idea that Necron weapons are so advanced they can chunk through anything in the game. Um, also, uh, the Gauss Reaper is a shorter range. It's not the same range, actually, but it's not assault anymore. And it's only AP1, not AP2. But it did gain lethal hits as well. So, uh, also the close combat weapon is one attack at 4-4-1. Four, four, so, the whole thing. So, warriors don't hit as hard. They have lower AP, but they do have auto wounding on sixes. So, there's a bit of a trade-off. Uh, it'll make them better... I think against units that rely heavily on invulnerable saves, like things like gene stealers uh, and maybe some knights uh, that like three up saved knights. But besides that, it's a, you know, it's about the same. Uh, also the fact that they have only a four up save and stuff and they move so slow, like you're going to 
kill probably a pretty good number of warriors. Like, I don't think it's gonna be that tough to kill them, um, but the reanimation's what's really gonna get you, uh, which is fun. Let's talk about the, the monolith. Oh, oh, oh boy. Unicomposition, monolith. Four Goss Flux Arcs, Particle Whip, and Portal of Exile. Your Goss Flux Arcs can replace four Death Rays. The monolith is Vehicle, Titanic. It has Fly Again, woo! Towering and Monolith. Um, remember, chat, towering models cannot get cover. Uh, and it cannot be hidden. That is part of the towering rule, like knights. Uh, if it is damaged, it, uh, oh, I'll go through here first. Seven inch move, so not that fast, but it can fly. Toughness, 14, uh, which is crazy because Laz Cannons are going to wound this thing on fives. Uh, it is two up save, which is normal. 20 wounds, which is actually less than it used to have. Um, again, the leadership, whatever. And eight OC, which is kind of insanity that it's eight. Its abilities are explodes, deadly demise, D6. It has deep strike, reanimation, of course, so D3 wounds every turn. And Eternity Gate. In the reinforcement step of your movement phase, you can select one Necron's infantry unit from your army that's either in reserves or on the battlefield, which is then removed. Uh, that unit can then be set up anywhere on the battlefield that is wholly within six inches of this model and not within engagement range. That unit cannot declare a charge. I would like to make an interesting point here, chat, that it appears that you can use this to remove people from combat. Oh no, my Necron warriors are stuck in combat with an enemy. <laughs> and you can then place them wholly, uh, wholly within six of the monolith and have them shoot. Um, remember, you cannot charge and you cannot go within engagement range, but there is nothing that says you have to be outside of nine. You can't charge, which is half the point, but you can be with inside nine. You can get a chunky amount of guns very close. Um, there is something to note. It has a damage stat that says you must subtract one from the hit roll and four from the OC. So you can actually make it a whole objectives worse, which is kind of interesting. Um, it's weapons though. It's weapons though are wow. So you pick one of the two, Goss Flux, Arcs, or Death Rays. We'll start with Goss Flux because they're normally the cheaper ones. There are three shots each with them. Um, and there's four of them. So it would be 12 shots. 12 shots, 24 inch range, six, one, one hits on threes. It has lethal hits, so auto wounding on sixes, but it's rapid fire three. So if you're within half range, which is 12, this thing fires 24 shots. That's pretty good damage, you know? That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Cringe. Who gives a shit? <laughs> Nobody. Let's talk about the death rays. Death ray. 24 inch range. You get four of them. Four attacks. Hits on threes. Strength 12. AP 4. D6 plus 1. Looks almost identical to the last cannon except shorter range and AP 3 uh, or 4 instead of 3. But you guys know what sustain hits D3 does? That's exploding sixes. But it's exploding sixes D3. So you roll a six, you get D3 additional attacks. <laughs> Out of your four dice, if you roll, let's say you miss one and you hit three and one of them was a six, you roll D3 and you get that many more hits. It's exploding sixes, but instead of just one attack, it's D3 attacks. But remember, it's only four shots. So whether you you just like, can you, can you imagine just like spiking that roll and getting three sixes? You roll three D3, and next thing you know, your four attacks turned into, turned into an average of nine. So your max would be nine? No, 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 no. The, the max you could possibly get out of the death rays would be 16 shots because it's four and then four D3 because it's D3 per. 
and he had to go three, 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 three. Which is most likely not going to happen because rolling four sixes is ludicrously low chances. And then rolling four more five ups is ludicrously low chances. Like that's just only going to happen once in a blue moon. But it's still hilarious, this concept. There's a good chance um, uh, Tesla weapons will have something like this. Anyway, this isn't even the thing that's the craziest to me. Not even the close, the sim not even at all. Particle whip, particle whip, 24 inch range, 3D6 shots, strength eight, AP one, two damage. But it has blast and then devastating wounds. Now I had to double check what blast does and I just found out recently. Blast is a... It is plus one shots per five models. I'm pretty sure. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe it's plus one shot per five models. So if you're firing this into a uh, into five man unit, it's 3d6 plus one. 10 man unit, 3d6 plus two. 30 man orc boys, 3d6 plus six. It's also devastating wounds, which is every single wound roll of a six does damage as mortals attack sequence ends. So two mortal wounds attack sequence ends, which is a lot. I'm not gonna lie, for the most part, almost everything I've seen weapon-wise has been a nerfed version of its prior except for the monolith. The monolith is insane. This thing hits like a truck. It, it's it got tons of shots, great strength. The AP is a little middling, I won't lie. And the damage is super high, but I'm not done yet. Portal of Exile, melee, six attacks, two up to hit, eight, two, flat, three damage. It also just rolls up and sucks you. Remember, chat, the portal of exile has you get sucked into the monolith and teleported somewhere else in the galaxy. In in like deep space. Or maybe inside a wall, for all we know. Or maybe inside a sun. Who cares? Would you call it supremacy of the Necron variety? I might. I might. Uh yeah, this has got a whole lot of shenanigans. Um, Death Ray hits like an absolute freight train. Um, also someone in chat quit asked, uh, what ex a weapon strength is. Um, a, a strength of a weapon is directly correlated to the toughness of the enemy. Um, the math goes like this. I have, let's say strength eight, but you are toughness four. I am double. Therefore I hurt you on a dice roll of a two or a higher. I am strength seven, which means I am above, but not double. Hurts you on a three. I'm strength four. We're equal. Hurts you on a four, under a five, half a, a six. Therefore, uh, for example, a strength 12 weapon shot into this monolith is a 14. It means you'll be wounding the monolith on a five. The flux arc on a six, the particle whip on a five. Ones always fail, six always exceeds. Can you explain the attack sequence ends thing? Yeah, sure. So basically, you roll a six to wound on the particle whip. That gives you devastating wounds. You take that six that would have been a save for the enemy, and you say, this is two mortal wounds, and that's it. They don't also need to make a save for the two damage as well. It's not two mortals now take a save. It's two mortals remove the save the attack sequence ends it makes so you can't like double up basically so it's like if, if, if you were to uh roll like five total uh wounds and two of them were sixes you'd be like okay um it's two sixes so that's two mortal wounds four mortal wounds and now take three saves because the other two aren't there anymore. 
Does that mean you lose your other hits? No, no, no. Uh, this devastating wounds is to wound. Sustained hits the explosion is to hit. Yeah, because a lot of times in um, in ninth edition, it was wound rolls of a six do a mortal in addition to the damage. This is mortals instead of. And since you can't really take a save against mortals, it's often the better option. Um, but yeah, this, this monolith is insanity. I don't know how much it'll cost. Everything matters about the cost, of course. Um, but this, this is a crazy ass data sheet. Can you choose to deal normal damage? Like what if an enemy has some feel of pain against mortals? I mean, you could, but at the same time, feel no pains generally don't get any better than a five. And let's be honest now, they probably have a save of some kind that is a much higher chance they just ignore your damage outright compared to a feel no pain to remove it. So, uh, though I don't think you get to pick. Anywho, Monolith actually looks insanity. I'm not gonna lie. Moving on. The Doomsday Arc. The Doomsday Cannon. The Casino Cannon. The classic D6 shots, D6 damage, only good if you're stationary, has been changed. The Doomsday Cannon has Blast and Heavy, 72 inch range, and it has D6 plus one shots, hits on a three, strength 15, AP four, and damage four. This means it'll wound the Land Raider on threes. It's got great AP, great damage. It's Blast, which is lovely if you wanna do some, um, uh, if you wanna shoot into squads. It's Heavy, which I think, um, Edition weapon profile stats. Chat, does heavy weapons give you plus one to hit if you don't move for vehicles as well, right? I thought it was just infantry at first. It's tied to the keyword. Oh, wait, this is wrong. Ah, uh, here we go. Bolt rifle. Heavy is profile uh, weapon. Uh, you may, yeah, yep, yep, yep. It, it, you're, you're right. Absolutely right. Okay. So that, that's why I was like, there'd be no point of it for a vehicle. So I thought it was just an oversight, but yeah. Um, so if you remain stationary, you get plus one to hit and you get the devastating wounds ability as well, which means if you roll a six to wound on the doomsday cannon, it does four Mortal wounds and the attack sequence ends. Um, I'm, I gotta be honest, the Necrons Doomsday Cannon, like the, the Necrons giant chunky weapons, they finally feel like Necron weapons. This is the only time I've seen weapon profiles for the most part get better. Almost everything prior has gotten a nerf because of the lethality of the game, but these weapons were so bad before. This adjustment is insane and incredibly good and very nice to see. Um, I mean, is it balanced? I'm not quite sure, uh, but I hope it is, and I hope it'll make me be as excited for my skelly boys as I hope I could be. And also it's strength 15, which is super high. No more quantum shield. Oh, we don't know. This is just the gun. We don't know what the uh, the profile of the thing is. It might have quantum shielding, but we don't know. The, the monolith never had quantum shielding, so who knows. Um, moving on, the shard of the void dragon. Our boy here. So... This is just the actual weapon itself, the Spear of the Void Dragon, that has a strike and a sweep. And I'd, I'd like to take a moment, to take a moment to discuss this with y'all, because I'm seeing some annoyances that bug me. There's a lot of people who are like, oh my god, Gilliman can use both the sword and the hand in the same phase, giving him 21 attacks. And I'm like, you're a stinky stupid head with your stinky stupid head. 
There's no fucking way in hell. This is a strike. This is a sweep. The core rules will obviously say you have to pick one. Same thing with Abaddon. But now I'm hearing people say, well, I don't know now, Bricky, because this has a strike and a sweep profile that you have to pick. And to that, I say, the guy's only got one weapon. He only hits with the one. <laughs> so they're not going to give him two separate weapons. It's just the one. <laughs> These boys have two weapons, a fist and a sword. <laughs> So that's how they're representing it. Could, could you imagine if it was just the punch and the sweet profile only with the hand of Dominion? That's it. And then do you, the, they would lose their fucking minds. They would be like, the Gilman has the Emperor's sword and can't swing it. Like, it's just the one he's got. Let him have the single. How do you sweep, sweep with the punch? Uh, he's throwing hooks he's throwing fucking <clears throat> hooks anyway uh, that screw you um spear of the void dragon it, you have to pick one i'm positive um strike is anti-vehicle two plus five attacks two up 12 three d6 plus two now you're probably thinking to yourself bricky what is anti-vehicle two plus oh, i'm glad you asked anti-vehicle or anti-infantry plus number is it will automatically wound on that roll. Not to hit, to wound. So he does need to hit with his two up. And then after he hits, if you are a vehicle, he wounds you on a two up no matter what. No matter what. Bring something to the melee stats, select one of its profiles. No, 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 no. I'm referring to, to, to Gilliman. Gilliman does not say that. This is, this is, I'm making a point. D don't worry about it. Um, so yeah, this is basically what on a roll of a two up, you auto wound a vehicle, which is totally on brand for the Void Dragon. Uh, then they take a big AP three and a whole shitload of damage. And it's lovely. Um, as for the sweep profile, 10 attacks, eight, one, two. Actually, pretty darn good sweep. Almost identical profile to the, uh, wait. Isn't it the identical profile? Yeah, 812. Yeah. So good sweep, great anti vehicle power, very good for the star gods. Love it. Uh, and then last but not least, we have a stratagem protocol of the Hungry Void, which is originally a command protocol. One CP fight phase, one Necron unit from your army that has not been selected to fight. Add one to the strength characteristics of melee weapons equipped. If a Necron's character is leading the unit, increase the AP of it as well by one. Can I just say how insanely good of a stratagem that is? I feel like the fact that stratagems are a lot less common now is a whole side thing, but wow. If you could give me plus one strength and plus one AP for a unit for one CP in ninth edition, I think I would use it like mad. I would use it all the time. Um, which is pretty good. And you can read here, it says, this is perfect for a dedicated close combat unit such as Flay Ones or Scorpec Destroyers, especially if they're led by a Scorpec Lord, which means that Scorpec Lords most likely will lead Destroyer Scorpec Lords kind of like things as well uh we wanted to capture the feeling that you are facing a slow creeping unending legion of deathless foes the reanimation program uh, protocols will give enough time to regenerate every unit to full strength we also wanted to instill the idea the massed ranks are under the control of immortal leaders whose will and command their legions fight with unnerving coordination and lethality um which is uh yeah pretty much the vibe, also this art just goes so hard, dude. This art goes so fucking hard. It's so cool looking. Um, but uh, but yeah, Krons. Krons are an interesting one. Uh, there are some side grades here and there. The monolith has fewer wounds overall, but it's still pretty tough. It hits like a freight train. Uh, warriors have less overall damage from their weapons. And, and, and they're not as powerful without a character. Well, they're not as powerful in general because you could might well be done warriors to hit on twos before. But they regen like mad. The Doomsday Cannon is way better. And 
yeah, it's the crons are really good. I'm feeling up, man. I'm feeling excited. Re I like the new reanimation protocols. I'm sad that the command protocols are less tactical, but I get the point for this one. Um, new reanimations are really good. They're simpler. They're really fun for the Necron player who can be like, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, it's reanimation time and just demoralize your opponents. It's really fun. Uh, also, I think that, yeah, yeah, guard is next. Guard is next. Well, I'm eating so good right now. They smacked me with, with my boys, the CSM, then the Krons, and then the guard. Man, if they hit sisters next, I'm going to cream. The cream. The cream. Anyway, that's, uh, that's Krons. Uh, I will, uh, we'll be back tomorrow for even more of this shit. Let's go. Let's go.